Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Jurassic News! Yes, that's right, we are back because we have shocking revelations and new things that I didn't even notice in the last video about the announcement of what other, but of course, Jurassic World Rebirth. Coming out in July 2025, that is next year summer. Uh, I didn't even put the uh, the date there in the last video, so I apologize. Everyone was like, well, when is it coming out then? <laughs> but before we get into the, the whole show, I'd like to start with something light with my award show that I like to call The Fakies, because as soon as a Jurassic World film is announced, we get inundated with fake trailers and fake thumbnails. And because of the the amazing uh, invention of AI art. We have some absolutely ah, chef's kisses thumbnails to give out today. So our winners are these guys. Yes, can we get a <laughs> well done? Well done. First place goes to Cinematic Pro Studio, just for that beautiful uh, T-Rex on the beach. I, I, the lightning is beautiful. I love. I love it. It's just absolutely fantastic. Brilliant work there trying their best to get as many views as possible <laughs> just over a minute uh, a second place goes to teaser universe uh, i didn't like the t-rex on this one as much as you can see it it, it it doesn't look as good in fact it looks better and third place goes to screen culture why well i mean it made it in here just because they they put chris pratt's head over the other the actor because they're like, well, I don't know who that guy is, but we all know who Chris Pratt is. <laughs> and of course, we've got the uh, the Indominus Rex there uh, approaching behind them. You know what? I, I admire that, taking the original thumbnail and doing something different. And this is an AI art. I think they've just superimposed Chris Pratt's head over the top of it. However, um, we did not just get three thumbnails because look at all of this beautifulness. All uh, pretending to be the newest trailer for Jurassic World Rebirth. We've got a, a, a absolutely horrendous T-Rex there. We have uh, the same horrendous T-Rex. I think it has five legs. It's it's hard to tell uh, with that one. We've got this one, which, I mean, if you look at the view, 700,000 and that only 12 for Wall Pro Studio, unfortunately. Screen Culture, three entries, four technically. I like this one. Uh, we've got the classic Chris Pratt running away, but then we've got a, a, a Chinese oh. dragon. Uh, behind him, which is beautiful. And then we've got old Chris Pratt for this one, really just shotgunning out all the things. And this one, we have the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom logo. Well, actually, this is a month ago, and they have the Jurassic World Dominion logo, but they put four on it because they didn't know what it was going to be. So at least it's kind of them attempting to give it a logo. But Screen Culture just used Fallen Kingdoms, not even Dominions. They were like, ah, oh, well, everyone's probably forgotten in the, what that one looks like. So <laughs> God knows. And then you got the other Screen Culture closer. Six months ago and a year ago, they were like, well, they must have just changed the thumbnail now to Extinction. Anyway, let's crack on with our top story today. In our last video, we went over uh, the, the plot synopsis. If you haven't watched, go check it out. But there was something in there that really stirred a lot of opinions and from me and from everybody else who was anticipating this movie, which is that uh, the world, the planet's ecology has proven largely inhospitable to dinosaurs. Those remaining exist in isolated equatorial environments where climates resembling the one in which they once thrived. Basically, the three most colossal creatures within the tropical biosphere hold the key to some miraculous life-saving benefits to humankind. We we're talking, uh, uh, cures cancer and reverses Alzheimer's. We're, you know, like Resident Evil, Deep Blue Sea. We we just one of those things, a bit like the locals, like, oh, we gotta stop them, except for, well, now we we're, we're not, you know, we're doing it for a good thing. So, yes. Uh, so, what does this mean for the franchise? Well, it means that everything that we know and love, dinosaurs could be dead. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, if we look here, we have the e equatorial uh, line going across here. And that pretty much is like Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, parts of uh, like Kenya, uh, all Africa. You've got Brazil. You've got all of this. All of this stuff. And I'm assuming we, we can take into account like this area, you know, it's all of this. 
all of that, that sort of region. We'll, we'll do a better line. There we go, better circle. So what is in that circle? And more importantly, what does it mean? For Rexy, Blue and Beta. Where did we last see them? Well, I've broken down, you know, the, the last four, six, God knows how many movies it's been and where they've taken place. So we had the uh, the most recent one, which was Jurassic World Dominion, which was Biosyn in the Dolomites in Italy, which is what you can see here, this one. And that is very far away from uh, the equator. Now, we could make the argument, well, it was in its own ecosystem, it was in a valley, so possibly that's like a safe haven for dinosaurs, and those might exist. Of course, we had the Malta, uh, which is, you know, again, very far away from the equator. I don't even know if this is the equatorial line. I feel like the equatorial line might be a little bit higher, but I could be wrong. Either way. And, of course, then you've got the five deaths. That's these Nublar, Sauna, Takano, Penna, and... I don't know, the other one. Yes, another one. And those were basically four or five movies took place there. And I would say off the coast of Costa Rica, there's high chance that any dinosaurs that were left on there and that did survive the eruption of Mount Saibo in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom would still be alive there. But more importantly, Blue and Peyton are celebrity dinosaurs. That's like saying, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's dead. Well, you can't have that. Well, these are more than dinosaurs. They transcend the barriers. They have their own freaking trailer, I'd imagine. Like, Blue, are you ready for your scene? <laughs> so, the Blue, of course, we were last, or they were last seen in uh, the Sierra Nevada Mountains, where Blue and newly born, I assume, Beta, were living alongside Chris Pratt, Owen Grady, and Claire Deering, and of course, I can't even remember. D M Maisie? Maisie, that's it. I was going to say Daisy. No. So, the last time we ever saw Blue and Beta, at the end of Dominion. And it showed, you know, Owen Grady sort of given a, maybe a final goodbye. I was wondering about this because it's sort of this like, I don't know, Chris Pratt's expression and his acting. I, I, it was very left up into a, <laughs> up in, <laughs> it was left up to the audience's interpretation. That's the word. So whether he was like, I'm letting you go. You can live your own. I don't need to babysit you anymore. Or whether it was, you know, Blue giving a, oh, thanks for saving my baby. And then going back off into the wilds. And they obviously still live. I don't know. It could be possible that the five years, I think this takes place after Dominion. Blue and Beta migrated south. It's very possible. But we just don't know. Now, Rexy, because of course Blue had the, the whole range of North America. Now, Rexy, uh, we last saw in the Dolomites, that being the Dolomite mountain ranges in Italy in the Biosyn Sanctuary. Of course, we saw that kind of burn down and I, I, it was very confusing as to, oh, well, it's over. The place has been destroyed. But has it really? Just because there's been a little fire? You had this contingency plan anyway? Isn't this all protocol? I don't know. Anyway, it gave the impression that afterwards Biosyn was done. But maybe, just maybe, the sanctuary could be maintained. I mean, we have down here this giant dam that I'm assuming they've made. And because of that, it's, you know, it's sort of, you can see it's, up here in the, in the top, you've got a lot of snow, but then down here, you've got fog and what appears to be tropical environment. You know, you had that as a beautiful in Jurassic World Evolution 2, that, that sort of uh, map that you could load in. And it's possible that this is tropical. And I mean, we last saw Rexy here uh, greeting the Isla Sauna Rexes, that being the bull and the doe from the Lost World. I'm assuming, now no confirmation on this, I, or maybe there is, I'm not too sure, but there was supposed to be five, I think, T-Rexes, Tyrannosaurus Rexes of Isla Sauna. And we know all the dinosaurs from Nublar and Isla Sauna were taken and put into uh, this Biosyn facility. So, as far as we're aware, Sauna and Nublar have no dinosaurs on them at all because they were taken and put here. Uh, evidence by the uh, the, you know, the two uh, T-Rexes that were on Sauna. No sign of Spinosaurus yet. And again, we'll kind of get into that. And let's go into our next segment. Yes, this is it. <laughs> oh, yes, I planned perfectly. Now, I missed this bit. Uh, well, I didn't miss it. I mentioned it, but I didn't really go into it. And that is uh, that you have the, you know, uh, what is it? Scarlett Johansson being the spy, leading the expedition to wherever it is. I'm assuming an island. 
and getting the DNA samples from the big, or the big three. That being an aquatic, an, a flyer, and a land. Again, this could be all subject to, you know, them just putting plot out there that might be complete lies. It could be fake leaks put out there. But if we're going to roll with this being real, then let's pretend it's real. So it says here that they come across a civilian family whose boating expedition was capsized by marauding aquatic dinosaurs. Now, I'm not going to show the the set pictures in London, or I think it was Malta, actually, where the type of boat, and it was them walking across the top. Just imagine, like, this is the boat, and it, it was, I think it was a catamaran, so it had a big, like, you know, they have a big rudder at the bottom, and the people were, they were walking across to the, the big military boat, and that's how I think Scarlett Johansson and their team picked them up. So, it's not a giant boat. But it's not a tiny boat either. So, who are our culprits? Well, culprit number one is, of course, the Mosasaurus. But, let's be honest, this was a very small, small little boat, and I don't think a Mosasaur would attack it. We've never seen the Mosasaur attack a ship apart from at the start of Dominion. And the only reason it attacked a ship was because it liked crabs. But it was food. It wasn't even after the ship. So to say that a Mosasaur would attack a ship for no reason is a bit far-fetched. And supporting this, at the end of Dominion here, you see it getting on with whales. When, you know, we thought that a Mosasaur out in the open would kill the last of the humpbacks, according to Jurassic Park of the game. The only theory that kind of supports that it might attack a ship is in Camp Cretaceous, where there it attacked a yacht. For no reason, apart from, and I, I, I like to say that Camp Cretaceous is soft cannon. <laughs> They have to have the Mosasaur in there somewhere and they had to stop the kids getting off the island somehow, some way, and the Mosasaur helped that. So, if it isn't the Mosasaur in the movie canon, what could it be? Well, this is where we get into theory territory and we have our favorite swerve there on screen, which everything you say, you have to take with a pinch of salt. So, so this whole theory, take with a massive truckload of salt, as he would say. So, in one of his theory videos, he mentioned about a deleted scene involving the plesiosaurs, which you can see here. It was this one. Now, I watched it because, I, of course, I like to keep on top of everything Jurassic and theories and all that jazz. And he mentioned that there was a deleted scene where a plesiosaur was supposed to be in Loch Ness and it was supposed to bump a boat. Now, this is, of course, humorous for many reasons, because, of course, the theory is Loch Ness Monster is a plesiosaur, and it would make sense. Now, he didn't say anything about it. didn't say whether it was a deleted scene of the movie, or whether it was just something to be a part of the rest of, you know, the canon. And the reason why I say that is because something like that would make sense in this. This down here is the Dino Tracker website. If you remember, you could scroll around the world and you would see little little uh, pictures and one of them was me in Amsterdam. <laughs> you can find me, I'm still there. Although I'm not credited because apparently, you know, that would break the canon even though I don't want to get involved in it. Watch my Dominion review, get to the end. You'll know my thoughts on Universal and their weird paid promotions and stuff like that. Do you see that? It's sleeping. I'm going to take a picture. Anyway, so it would make more sense for me if he's talking about, you know, someone in the Jurassic Park community might have mentioned that there was an idea that, uh, you know, up here in Scotland, there was supposed to be a plesiosaur and it'd be a little bit of an Easter egg. That makes more sense to me. Rather than what I was thinking, the only way it would make sense is at the start of Dominion, down here, where you have the news. And in the news, it goes to different parts of the world where different dinosaurs have been discovered. A lot of those clips actually came from the Dino Tracker website. For me, the type of ship it was that was capsized and the creatures that are available in the Jurassic canon, kind of, not including Jurassic World Evolution 2, you know, movie canon. If we go into game canon, it could be anything. It could be a Megalodon, because that's in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And I don't think it's a Megalodon, because a Megalodon would also absolutely destroy the ship and eat everybody on it if it was. And that's no way they would introduce a Megalodon into, you know, Jurassic. I feel like this whole scene will be this military ship with Scholar Johansson rides up against the, the human ship, and then all of a sudden they get attacked by a bunch of plesiosaurs. Plesiosaur, to me, is the one creature that could probably capsize that sort of ship. And, you know, we, it's what we've wanted to see for the longest time. Ichthyosaurs could, I suppose, but just by bumping into it, 
but that's a lot less climactic, I think, than having this huge net come out of the water and just smash into it or, or whatever. The last section of the news was this. Uh, this is an Instagram post by the, I think it's the paleontologist who is working on the Jurassic World Rebirth movie. He actually visited the set, as you see. Hello from Jurassic World set in London. It's official Jurassic World Rebirth is on its way. A fresh direction for the franchise. Same old paleontology consultant, me. I'm, um, well, I'm assuming he was on Jurassic World then. But really new uh, creative visions from director that Gareth Edwards and team awesome character designs. However, if you look closely, there is a reply from a certain Jack Horner. <laughs> Who is very controversial in the in the whole dinosaur uh, and paleontological scene because he thought T-Rex was only a scavenger and never killed anything, as well as making his chickenosauruses. But that aside, he asked, "Hope you had, uh, were getting on well on the set. Hope to see some animatronic puppets. Have fun, Steve." And Steve responded to this, saying, "Thanks, Jack. Your name came up a lot." Frank says, "Hi. There is one super charming animatronic." Now, in my last video, I mentioned that there was. No animatronics in Dominion. <laughs> Rubbish. But actually there was. I completely forgot about the Giganotosaurus being an animatronic. And of course you had the Dilophosaurus, but I did mention that. But it was the, the Giganotosaurus was the big one that they actually made and, and made it into the movie. So my apologies. I completely forgot about it. It slipped my mind. Just shows how memorable it was. But what does this mean? Uh, an animatronic in Jurassic World Rebirth? What kind of animatronic we're talking about here? Well, let's have a look. I mean, when the only things we have to go by is super charming new animatronic. Does this conjure up images of the Spinosaur from Jurassic Park 3? Or does it conjure up images of, you know, the Microceratus in Dominion? For me, I mean, you're calling it super charming. I think it's more than likely going to be just a little Microceratus, not a giant T-Rex or a giant Mosasaur. And if we think about what dinosaurs we're going to have, remember, there's going to be three three big ones, three guaranteed ones we're going to see, which is probably going to be some, you know, apex carnivore. Not, I wouldn't have thought it'd be a super, you know, like a, a what is it, Argentinosaurus. We're going to be T-Rex, Spinosaur, King Mosasaur. It's going to be something like that. Uh, the aquatic is, I assume, going to be Mosasaur, and the fly is probably going to be Hatsocopteryx or Quetzalcoatlus. It'd be nice to see, uh, you know, Hatsocopteryx make its debut in the movies, but it makes sense that it'd be Quetzalcoatlus because they're in this Mayan sort of facility. Like, this is the, the, the sort of structures that we have, uh, you know, we've seen on set, this sort of old Mayan architecture sort of thing going on. So it makes sense for it to have Quetzalcoatlus, right? Because Quetzalcoatlus' actual name is inspired by the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl. So I think it would make perfect sense. And it, weirdly, if it was to go back to its Aztec roots, you know, somewhere. But uh, uh, that aside, anyway, anyway, guys, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I just thought we, you know, I never addressed that Rexy might be dead or Blue and Beta might also be dead. I mean, if we look at the uh, equator, for instance, you know, and where things are, where things are positioned, I think it's quite likely that, you know, you got Blue over here. So Blue could migrate all the way through Mexico, through Costa Rica, you know, making its way into that right environment. And Rexy, however, has a little bit of a, a bigger stretch, you know, she's got to go from here and, 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 I don't know, migrate, jump across the ocean. Uh, that way, I guess the only way, land way to go is, you know, through this way, through here, through Turkey, through, <laughs> through Egypt, and then finally making their way down. Unless she just wants to, you know, I don't know, visit a little bit of China, a little bit of Thailand, Vietnam, you know, all that, and eventually make her way there. So, again, a bit of a stretch for Rexy to survive, but then again, I think, really, the, the saving grace is that, you know, you have the Dolomites which are, you know, this enclosed area, which is tropical. And it, it's so weird that in this franchise, they're saying that the dinosaurs are going extinct. And what was it again? What was the, the reason given? The planet's ecology has proven largely inhospitable to dinosaurs. So ecology? 
That sort of means like plants and food and fauna does not match. I assume it's not climate because I mean, I mean, come on, you've got like snow. You're the Pyraptor and snow. Dinosaurs seem to be okay with snow. <laughs> but anyway, guys, it's always fun theorizing on these things. But if you enjoyed this video, if I've missed out anything, leave in the comments down below. I'll be down there discussing with you guys. And until next time, when we maybe we'll get an actual trailer and not something that looks like one of these rubbishes. Ooh, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll make my own. That'll be quite interesting. I'll put my face on <laughs> next to Scarlet Johansson. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, bye-bye.